Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Andrew Koth. You're watching AK in the Streets once again. We're here in Bakersfield, California, uh, my hometown. We're going to be talking to Ronald Ramirez of the original Going Underground Records, owner and founder. Um, I have a long history with this record shop. I've been coming here s literally since I was 13 years old, and I just turned 29 a couple days ago, so that is... Uh, it's no mistake, uh, this is an amazing record store, and Ronald does amazing work uh, curating and stocking it. Um, let's, let's check it out. Okay, um, we're here with Ronald Ramirez, uh, founder and owner of Going Underground Records. Um, Ronald, how long has this current location been open? Uh, current location on 19th Street, I think we've been here for five-ish years. I think it's been, yeah, about five years now. Um, you've been, had the record store since 2001. I've been coming here at least since I was 13, I believe, in the Haberfield building. Um, <laughs> it is really crazy. Um, what advice do you have for small business owners with or without um, like a brick and mortar spot? Um, I don't know. It's just a lot of constant work, a lot of um, work all the time. It's what we do. Nonstop. Definitely. <laughs> it's misery. Don't do it. <laughs> Certainly. Um, so how important are online sales and like social media right now? Online sales, I mean, we sell online, but we try to put the best stuff in the store. So that, that's our goal, is to put the best records in the store, not online. Um, that being said, we do sell online, do okay online, um, and it definitely helps. Social media is always good. Post a record, people know you have it, they come in and buy it. And it just builds um, attention to the store, which is always nice. Would have been nice to have that in the Haberfeld building. <laughs> no doubt, yeah, getting people. That would have helped a lot. For sure. You have a few in-house labels that you release music through. Um, you want to talk a little bit about those? Sure. Uh, Going Underground is like a punk label. It's obviously the same name as the store. Um, we just released a new generation, so Cita LP. Um, all, everything on that label is punk. It's all punk, punk rock. Uh, Obia is our other label, um, and that's like reggae, soul, different kind of stuff. But with the, the store label, we focus on Stuff. Uh, if you were to give me your top three Yellow Man albums, what would they be? Um, okay, top three Yellow Man, Mad Over Me, top one. Number one, that's it. One with a bullet. And then Duppy or Gunman, the best. Uh, and then uh, Divorced. You heard it, folks. Or live at Sunsplash. That's a good thing in our life. Live at Sunsplash? Live at Sunsplash, yeah. Everybody, look it up. Get on that. So if you come to Going Underground Records um, here, you look at the walls, you see pretty quickly that you have a very extensive and deep collection of uh, Bakersfield music memorabilia from posters to, I mean, a lot more just wild and deep stuff. Where, where did um, this collection start? How did it grow? I started with that with with being a kid and just having the punk rock things of concerts I would go to. Um, so that's where that started. But it's important to me to document a lot of the local things that happen, a lot of the old concerts, a lot of the groups that are really forgotten about. No one knows, no one really cares. Um, so it's important to put that stuff up so people are reminded, you know, we did do a lot of cool stuff in this town, a lot of concerts that happened, a lot of groups that were good. Um, 
it helps. A nice reminder. You see, walk in and you see all this crazy stuff. You're like, where did this stuff happen? Well, it happened here. And you know your city is is pretty cool. Uh, idea of the the depth of, of how much music happened here and kind of the the history that you've been able to put on display. So I think it's I think it's very important, and I really appreciate uh, what you've done here with that. Um, what do you think is the is maybe the lasting effect of Bakersfield music in popular culture and popular music. Lasting effect, I think people just uh, they go to corn pretty quickly. That's like what they think of. Secondary, ironically enough, Buck Owens. I think corn has gone a step above um, Buck. But those those two things, they think corn, they think Bakersfield sound, they think that we're a bunch of cavemen and you know uncivilized people, which to an extent, yes. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's what you're going to get when you think of, like, what Bakersfield is. Um, but, I mean, obviously you're showing the people that there's, there's a lot more to it. And there's a lot deeper. A lot deeper. A lot deeper. Bakersfield was strong in soul music. It was obviously very strong in country music. I mean, there was great rock groups here. Um, some punk rock in the early 80s, there wasn't a ton, but to a certain point, uh, it, you know, it grew and grew. And then in the 90s, tons of, like, alternative rock stuff was happening here. Really big. I mean, I, I feel like had I not grown up here, I wouldn't have uh, been as into jazz as I am. I wouldn't have been into as much alternative or punk rock as I am. But it's like you, you seek out more when there's maybe um, less of an idea of what the what the culture is. Absolutely. You have to try harder. Coming from Bakersfield, you have to try harder. You have to go to L.A. You have to drive to go do stuff, especially, you know, a long time ago. There's a lot less to do. So, yeah, exactly. You work harder to figure things out, especially pre-internet. You, know, you had to work really hard to learn, learn stuff, find stuff, and you appreciate it a lot more when you put that effort in. No doubt. Uh, when I first started uh, coming to Going Underground, uh, your your oldest son would be here playing video games, very in the mix, yeah. um, and he still seems to be here a lot. Uh, how do you how do you balance uh, family and business? Um, that's a hard thing to balance because you have to have a lot of time for the kids, which I have three of, and a wife. So it's important, you know, to take the time, stop working, spend some time, get back to work after everybody's asleep, kind of thing. That's what I do a lot of. It seems like you're making making it work. I'm trying, I'm trying. I'm almost there. <laughs> do you have any advice uh, for collectors um, looking to score their favorite thing out there in the record stores, in the crates? Buy it when you see it. Quit looking on your phone. <laughs> That's it. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, true words. Never been spoken. <laughs> <laughs> we already looked. <laughs> and finally, what can we look forward to in uh, 2019 uh, with the store here? Uh, try to get bigger, better. We're always working on more stuff, more collections, more getting more records out on the shelf, acquiring more collections. Call us. Um, that's it, just getting more stuff out, getting more stuff in. Well, thank you so much for speaking with me, Your Honor. And uh, it's been a pleasure, and I hope to come here for another, like, 10 or 15 years. <laughs>